Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course, where you will learn how to design steel connections using RAM Connection Standalone. RAM Connection Standalone is used for the design and detailing of steel connections, and it can design individual shear, moment, brace, splice, and truss connection types to a variety of different steel design codes. In this particular video, we're going to be focusing on the workflow for designing bent plate connections for the purposes of resisting shear reactions. We will now turn our attention to our sample model in RAM connection standalone. And we're going to start with selecting joint number six. Now what's important to understand for a bent plate connection template within RAM connection standalone is that it will require a skew angle to be assigned to the beam section, whether you're in a beam column or beam girder joint. So you can see joint six and seven already have that type of geometry in them. Both these joints also have a shear reaction imposed upon them. So let me start with joint number six. This is a typical beam column flange joint and a skew angle has been assigned to the beam section. Now a bent plate connection template can be assigned directly through the templates area from the database or through a basic connection workflow. To access the basic connection workflow, you can select the design tab in your ribbon toolbar, click on the assign option and then find basic connection. For bent plate, I'm looking for the acronym BP. And you can see here, I have a all bolted option. So let's go ahead and select that. And I will confirm that the connection has been assigned. Now in the joint selection area, I'm gonna notice that the status of the connection has been indicated. Although my interaction ratio is less than 1.0, it is showing a yellow indicator light, which means that some type of warning was issued for this particular connection. So let's review that a little further within the connection pad. To access the connection pad, select the design tab in your ribbon toolbar, click on the edit icon, and then you can edit the shear connection. Again, I'll be able to see the status of this connection design in the ribbon toolbar in the connection pad. Now, since I did get a warning, let me go ahead and first review my steel connection report so I get a better idea of what produced this warning. So I'm gonna click on my results icon and then I'm gonna scroll down. Now here I can see that the length of the bent plate is greater than the maximum recommended value. So I need to go ahead and adjust my bent plate geometry. I'm gonna scroll on down and I don't see any other errors or warnings that are being issued. Now, if I'd like some additional information in this connection pad, again, I can click on the view formulas icon to see the equations and variables that were used to arrive at these results. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of the connection pad. I'm gonna scroll down in my data area and take a look at some of the parameters that were already assigned to this connection type. Now, for this particular joint, I'm gonna take a look first at my plate thickness. And what I'm gonna to try to do is I'm gonna to try to increase this plate thickness and play around with some of the connectors. So if I go from a quarter inch plate to a half inch plate, I can see what that does for me. It didn't actually get rid of the warning, but I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at some other parameters as well. And the next area I'm going to take a look at are the connectors to the beam. And I'm gonna up these from three quarter inch to 7 8 inch. I'm going to again go with A325 type N bolts. And I'm going to change the number of bolts. So I'm going to go rows of bolts. And you can see here how it says five bolts. I'm going to reduce that down to four. What that will do is actually shrink the length of the plate. I'm going to do that for both the beam side and the support side. If I shrink that down to four, then I can see that I'm now getting to a passing connection design. And I can reconfirm that by looking in the ribbon toolbar. Now at this point, I know that I haven't, I no longer have any errors or warnings on this particular connection design. And since I did make changes, I'm gonna now go ahead and click the save icon so that those will be retained once I exit the connection pad. Now at this point, I'm satisfied with my new and revised connection detailing. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of the connection pad. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at my beam girder joint. Again, this also has a skew angle assigned to the beam section. 
I'm going to go up to the Assign icon in the Ribbon Toolbar, go to Basic Connection, and again, I'm going to select the Basic BP Bolted option. You can see that bent plate was assigned, and this time, if I take a look in the Joint Selection area, I can see that I achieved a passing connection design. Let's go ahead and just review the connection pad for this currently selected joint. And we can see some of the parameters that we could modify or customize per if we needed to, including your beam girder alignment, your plate material and thickness, along with your connector information. Now, although we selected a bolted option, both the connection type for the beam and the support side could be changed to welded if you would prefer. Now, I didn't make any changes here, so I'm going to go ahead and just exit out of the connection pad. I'm going to save my model, and at this point, this concludes my process for assigning a bent plate connection template to both a beam column and a beam girder joint. And again, a skew angle was assigned to the beam sections within these joints. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.